I wanted to make a little video about anorexia and about uh, anorexia treatment. Um, the current treatment doesn't really work that well, but people really aren't questioning it, which is kind of dumb. But the assumption is that it's this always this psychiatric situation where the person wants to be thin, they're counting calories, and they're just kind of this desire to be thin runs away with them. And for some people it is that, or for some people the treatment can sort of make them think of it like that or make it into that, and anorexia treatment can even reinforce that certain model of what anorexia is, because they keep telling you this is who you are, that's what happened to me when I was in treatment for it. And there's a really interesting book called uh, Feeding Anorexia about um, by a sociologist, I think, who was in a treatment center, and she's like, it's weird, some of the practices here are actually playing into the patterns, they're kind of reinforcing the disease, you know, and I had my college buy that for me. But um, there can be a lot of other biological things at play, and I think that there were for me. And there used to be a site called uh, Anorexia Truth, where a dad talked about how his daughter got misdiagnosed with anorexia, and it turned out she had some sort of digestive problem. Um, some people can be self-medicating for other health issues with it, you know, because it will cut down on inflammation and pain. You know, your body goes into a certain kind of fasting state. Um, and an, another, another issue can be if you're having problems with standard American food. A lot of people have food intolerances or intolerances of certain ingredients, and that's what I think happened with me mainly is that I was, um, especially after puberty, when your estrogen goes up and you get more, I got started to get dark circles under my eyes from food allergies, and I, you get more copper and less zinc and different things happen. A lot of people become anorexic at puberty. And, um, you know, even people that aren't really thinking about if they want to be thin at that point, a lot of really high motivated types of girls, and, and they say, well, that's just because they're perfectionists, but I, I think there could be a biological component or explanation, just that these certain, if you look at Carl Pfeiffer's work, there's certain kinds of body types, uh, depending on people's loads of copper and methylation patterns that make people kind of high-strung, and also prone to this kind of copper-zinc imbalance where they might lose their appetite as they go through puberty. Um, I find that uh, even though, you know, I'm recovered now and I don't have any problems with it now, like, I still understand what I was saying back then. Which I would tell people, regular food gives me brain fog. If I eat normally, I have a lot of brain fog and I have trouble studying, which was important to me because I was trying to go to a good college. I had said that I, my body would feel puffy if I ate regular food and I would be just really puffy. My face was puffy, my legs were puffy, I didn't feel like I'd fit in regular clothes. And what's interesting now is that the way that I've found to eat, I'm I'm not puffy. And people, a lot of my boyfriends tell me this, they're like, you're so compact. You don't have all that puffiness. And it's because I've learned how to eat without triggering inflammation in my body. And, um, I, you know, I think that that's kind of what I was picking up on about regular food is making me feel all puffy. So I, I, that's why I just didn't like how I felt when I ate a lot. And I would also have glucose issues and crashes and burns and with, um, if I had, a, you know, standard American carbs and my body just can't handle that because I'm on a carbs. And I would tell people this, I would say, I want to eat, I don't want to be thin, but I'm just, if I eat, I just have a lot of trouble concentrating and my body feels bad. And they thought that, oh, they're like, you feel bad when you eat. That's because of your psychi you know, psychological symptom. And I couldn't get anybody to take me seriously. So... For years, I just went on trying to strike some balance where I would kind of eat less when I had important things to do, and then I would try to figure out whatever foods could I eat that didn't make me feel bad. I ended up eating a lot of protein because that didn't give me the glucose problems. But um, eventually, I uh, was trying to get off SSRIs because I was interested in having kids while I was on birth control. Birth control made me really interested in having children, something that I've never otherwise been interested in, I'm not interested in now. And so I started going to a naturopathic doctor, and he changed my life. He got me to stop um, the birth control and the SSRIs slowly, and he got me on uh, elimination trials for what I was allergic to, so I ended up stopping eating gluten, one of the best decisions of my life, because it had been giving me a lot of inflammation and problems. And then... Um, I ended up stopping a couple other things that I was sensitive to, like corn. 
I started eating a lot of vegetables, healthy food, um, fish oil, and certain vitamins that he had me take. Um, and eventually I had my root canals removed. You can see here. I have a thing that I can wear in there, but I don't have it in now. But uh, that actually lowered a lot of my toxicity, and I think that that's part of why this problem started, because the root canals were giving me uh, detox problems. And, um, you know, ever since then, I haven't had any problems with being anorexic, even though it was something that was a really severe problem for me for seven years before that. I've heard a lot of stories from people that say once they found how to eat properly, good nutrition, high-quality nutrition, that they um, that's what got them over anorexia. And what I found, the benefits were that uh, if I ate properly, I ate healthy food, you know, no additives, mostly stuff that I cook at home or else high quality restaurants, um, you know, or organic, something like that. The food didn't make me feel bad anymore. I could eat and still feel good. Um, and I would actually feel satisfied once I would finish eating because I think my absorption was going better and I was getting more vitamins. And so my body would actually... It used to be that I feel hungry no matter what I did, so it was hard to follow my hunger. Like people would tell me to do, I'm like, well, even you know, there there was just like a nutrition craving that I would have all the time, regardless of what I ate. But when, you know, when I started eating really nutritious food, and at that time I took some vitamins because I I needed them then. I don't take a multivitamin anymore, but um, and then I wasn't having the puffiness problems or the brain fog from the food. So uh, I uh, I know there's a a center in, I think, I think, Arizona, where they use nutrition for anorexia, and um, I, I just, it just hurts me to think about how many people are kind of fighting this losing battle to try to sort of make peace with eating the standard American diet and liking how they feel and look on that diet, when some people's bodies just are not cut out for that, depending on your detox genes or allergies or absorption issues or, you know, your inability to handle glucose. Or, I mean, I have a lot of, my, there's diabetes in my family. I have a lot of problems with basically anything other than a paleo diet. So um, I encourage people to look into nutrition and um, look at, you know, Chris Kresser, uh, paleo diet, Mark's Daily Apple, Dr. Mercola, um, Gerson therapy, juicing, superfoods, uh, there's just so much that you can get into, and once you get into one thing, you just start learning more things, get on the email lists, and um, please leave comments if this was interesting to you, and, you know, and it's funny because, like, in, in theory, I, you know, like, I ought to be, like, battling anorexia all my life, I never think about it, I don't have to think about my weight, because I know how to eat, and um, I never diet, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm sort of, I get the impression a lot of women think about the rape, but I don't. I just have my life and um, basically eat like a guy. I usually eat more than my boyfriends. So um, that's all. <laughs>